Who what is up? My fellow Tarhans, I'm Captain Beans and welcome to High Fleet Builds where today we're going to take a look at some of the ships that my little community has designed and this community is called the Beans Navy. The link for that Discord server will be in the description below but right now let's get into the ships shall we? <laughs> So the first ship that we're going to take a look at is this one right there. This one is called the Centurion and this one has been designed by a guy called Nekta Nektavich. And basically that thing right there is kind of like a much more improved Gladiator because as you can see it has a couple of these AK 100mm 100, 100 guns and it has actually four of them. This thing also does have pretty decent armor on its sides as well as the top and it does lack a bit of armor on the bottom but in order to compensate they did put a little bit of palash systems right here and right here as well and as its main fuel source of course you have this big fuel tank which i think it also gives it a decent enough combat time which i actually really like about it in terms of armament this thing also has four of these r5 zenith missiles which i would assume they would only be used against larger and more tougher ships so just to see how this thing works, let's test it out in combat, shall we? Alright, so right here we have a bit of a selection of uh, medium to small garrison ships. And I feel like this is a reasonable demonstration of this ship right here because I see it as a garrison fighting ship. A slightly heavier garrison fighting ship. Maybe this thing could do silent strikes because i think it barely goes above 300 kilometers per hour but i think this is more meant to be a very capable fighter against medium to large ships anyway let's go let's go bitches <laughs> so first combat with uh, face cam i guess <laughs> we'll see how this goes All right, let's first fire upon this guy Let's also dodge their artillery. Mm -hmm. Wait, does this thing have flares? Oh, it does. Okay. This thing does have flares, which is actually what I'm going to remove uh, some points from that ship. That's because it has flares. And the reason why it's minus points, that's because flares suck ass. I mean, look, it's literally not even helping with those missiles. I literally have to do manual dodging to avoid these missiles. So, like, what's the point of flares anyway? It's like, just dodge, bro. And even though I am pretty armored, as you can see here, I do dodge fairly easily. Even though I do have to kind of be careful with that, not to, not to overdo it though, because otherwise I would overheat my engines. Let's keep to port side of this gladiator right there. Okay, I gotta dodge this missile. Ah, okay. No, never mind. I shot it down. Cool. Ah, if I could only learn how to aim with this thing. Ah, shit. It. Right. This one's not. Ah, okay. Alright, actually, I really like the maneuverability on this thing. Even though it has armor, it's still maneuverable. Like, that's actually really good. That's... I really like this thing. Even though I am kind of using a lot of fuel right now in order to do the dodging. Let's use a missile on this guy. <laughs> and that did it. <laughs> Alright, so let's take a look at the damage real quick. So, as we can see here, uh, we did only damage a little bit of the starboard side, but otherwise, because I've been dodging quite a lot, uh, this ship actually works really damn well. And it has survived all of this stuff. And what do I think of this ship? It's work. It's good. And so, you know what? Let's move on to the next ship. Alright, so the next ship we have is this one right there. It's called the Kalahari. And this one has been designed by someone called Makino. 
And basically, this thing right here is meant to be a sort of flagship. As you can see by this really large fuel tanks and also some of these sensors and these aircraft, as well as some of these sprints, this guns, and I guess, well, I mean, just look at the shape of this thing. It does have a very vanilla high fleet aesthetic to it, and I really do give points to the creator for, for making this ship look a lot like something High Fleet would have as a vanilla ship, as a stock ship. One thing that does really strike me quite a lot is uh, this uh, armored bridge right here, which uh, is quite nifty, but I think it does work simply because this area right here is kind of a weakness in terms of uh, armor and stuff like that because you do have these sensors right here which do require empty hull spaces in order for electricity to pass through so you can't really have armor in this area so much but i really do like this ship not only because of how it looks but also i mean it it has really good armament take a look at this it has 10 of these D-80 Molot cannons, which are 130mm guns, which is kind of a pretty curious choice of caliber for such a large ship. I personally would have honestly went with 180mm guns, but I think Makino probably definitely was onto something when uh, he put 130mm guns on this ship. We'll see, we'll see in combat how and why he decided to use these guns. But as a secondary armament, he did put, I believe, eight of these 2A37, 37mm Seawiz systems. These work really well at stopping missiles, as we will see in combat. And as another strategical asset, we do have some of these T7 planes right here, which they help intercept missiles and stuff like that. We also do have some sprints, not a lot of them, but this work is enough to stop at least a couple of cruise missiles. And overall, I think this is a really good uh, multi-purpose little ship. The only thing that this is missing are strategic missiles, but I don't think that that is necessarily a problem. I think that strategic missiles could be carried by other ships with this thing in the fleet. Also, here are the stats if you want to take a look at those. And let's get into combat with it, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, okay, this is a little bit big. So here we have a couple of large ships that I'm going to test the Kalahari against. It's nothing too crazy, uh, but hopefully this thing should take these guys out rather easily. All right, so let's go. Uh, I do remember speaking with Makino about uh, this ship right here, and I did see him fight against uh, difficulty 10 with large ships and as far as i'm aware i think he did he did live and but he, but he did take on quite a lot of damage the reason i'm not doing such a huge test is because against difficulty 10 that's gonna take a lot of time and i would much rather fight a shorter but still a more entertaining battle All right, we gotta get these guys into one firing line. Oh shit, I am getting a little bit hot here. I think I can also see why Makino decided to put 130mm guns instead of uh, 180mm, because it does have a higher volume of fire with fewer guns. Well, I mean, the Shkval it does have a higher volume of fire, but uh, it is expensive, whereas having a bunch of 130mm guns, it's uh, it's a little bit cheaper than the Shkval, and you have just about the same sort of volume of fire. Also, I am getting completely stern raked right now, so I should try to kill the Variag as soon as I can, which I just did. Bye-bye, <laughs> Variag! Okay, we are experiencing a, a little bit of lag. I can tell that my guns are shooting a little bit slower. But I think that's not a big deal because, I mean, large ships generally tend to cause a little bit of lag. Alright, come on. Arhangel, can you, can you please, like,
like unalive yourself right now? Okay, you didn't have to do it yourself. I, I had to do it for you. <laughs> Alright, so let's keep fighting. And yeah, honestly, I think the reason why we already took so much damage is honestly because of an unlucky start. We did start at the very top of the screen and the Variag was below us for a good amount of time. Let's take a look at the damage. So, the bottom stern did suffer quite a lot, but it's not, not too bad. It is still repairable. If we were to fight with this thing side by side with the bow towards the enemy, then we would have definitely survived more hits. Simply that's because where there's more armor. And I think also even bottom fighting is not too bad because you can see it has quite a bit of top armor too. But combat test, it passed reasonably well. So yeah, uh, Kalahari, what do I think of this ship? Is work. I think it is definitely a viable flagship. It is a little bit more expensive than the Sevastopol, but if you saw the stats from before, it does provide a little bit more than the Sevastopol, so I think it's worth the price. Unlike the next ship that we're gonna take a look at. <laughs> uh, speaking of, let's move on. <laughs> Okay, now what the hell is this thing, bruh? Like, <laughs> I mean, just look at this thing. It's like, uh, why? Why? Why did you make a ship and just rotate it 90 degrees? Well, basically, this thing right here is the Callisto. This has been designed, I believe, by two people. One of them was Sherper, and the other guy was uh, Zhu, with, who I think provided the idea of designing a sideways ship. And the reason why this thing has been made, rotated at a 90 degree angle, I'll show you in just a moment. But right now, let's just take a look at what this thing has to offer. I guess let's start from the bow, which as you can see here, we have a lot of rather min maxi looking armor, which uh, I mean, it certainly probably serves good as armor. It just looks so min max and just fucky, bro. I mean, okay, so at the bow, we do have some of the stationary thrusters. Uh, this section right here also has stationary thrusters. I guess, I'm guessing this part is just thrusters. I guess to give it more thrust, I mean, who gives a shit? Uh, this part right here is heavily armored. And as far as I'm aware, this side right here is probably the best for fighting ships because this is the most amount of armor this, this thing has. As its main armament, we can see two of these 180mm Schval turrets. By the way, my most favorite guns of all time in this game. It is the best. Simply because these just rapid fire on 180mm shells, they go like boom, 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 boom. And of course, as secondary armament, we do have 37mm turrets, which I guess they would also work re reasonably well at stopping missiles. As some more armaments at the stern, we do have a bunch of these R5 Zenith missiles. Hmm. Personally, I don't really use Zenith missiles that much. Uh, I understand why people have those, but it's just the reason I don't use them on my ships is because I forget that they're on my ship until I realize and I hear the voice line saying missile lost. <laughs> but I mean, if you are an avid user of the Zenith missiles, I think you might like this ship. But uh, one thing you should also pay attention to right here is this absolutely gimbal squeeze the fuck out of all of these ammo boxes and these thrusters right here. Like, bro, why Minmax, bro, are, is you stupid? Minmaxing does serve a bit of a purpose at uh, giving more space to components uh, that are vital to the ship, such as thrusters and the ammo modules. And in this case right here, it is actually made pretty well. The only thing is that this part of the ship right here is the least armored and I'm not sure about you guys, but uh, having ammo on the least armored side of the ship sounds a little dodge as fuck. 
I'ma be real. Because if any armor-piercing shell were to launch itself right into this part of the ship, it's over. It's dead. It's just dead. Because of all these ammo boxes right here. And also this fuel tank right here. Like, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> bro, honestly, this whole thing, it just looks so ridiculous. But the reason why this thing is so ridiculous is because of the way it's meant to be landed. Here, I'm going to show you a little clip from the actual creator of this ship uh, demonstrating how to land this flying piece of min-max shit. So, let's watch it, shall we? All right, so that was the landing demonstration for uh, this thing right here. Let's see how this thing, how well this thing does in battle, shall we? All right, so here we have a bunch of large ships be because I really want to see this thing actually get destroyed. Because I, <laughs> to be honest, like these min-max looking ships, eh, I don't know. I guess, let's just see how this works in combat, shall we? Alright, let's go, bitchies. Uh, okay, one thing I just noticed, I started on the starboard side. Which is not good, because my port side is uh, the least armored. Which is very unlucky. But I guess we'll make do of what we have here. The Varyag is shooting his artillery at me. They are all, they're all firing missiles at me. Yes, he's work. He's okay. Okay, we killed the Varyag now. Now let's move on and kill the Bore. And let's see if we can move to the other side. Because... Yeah, this thing is meant to fight more from above. I believe. Yeah. Oh, let's we'll launch a couple of missiles at uh, this other body right here. See how that goes. Yeah, we're blasting him decently well. Oh, look, we just punctured his armor, so we can just now easily just... ...punch through whatever remains of that ship. And... Yes! Let's go! This guy just got destroyed. Let's use some more missiles. Oh my god, the amount of missiles is just... Bro... Why the hell is everyone so... Such rapists when it comes to missiles, bro, like... Like, bro... Legit, like, missiles are like the only things you see on the screen right now, bro. Okay, come on. I'm also experiencing quite a bit of frame drop. And that's because there's just so many large ships and also debris falling. Ah, it's fun. It's fun though, like, this is High Fleet right here. I'm literally fighting a bunch of these ships with a Giga Min Max ship. That is just... Bruh, what the fuck, man? I mean, we are doing really well, though. 
We haven't suffered any significant damage, though, from any of the missiles. We did manage to stop most of them. And the artillery, too. Okay, now we've moved to a more favorable position to fight from. If only my Schqual turrets could turn a little faster. That would be nice. Uh-huh. Nomad is dead. Let's go. Come on. Cormoran. Die. Die. Come on, bruh. Come on. Cormoran, please die. Like, like, okay, for the sake of the video, come on. Come on, do it for, for the video, bruh. Okay, they did it. Mm -hmm. Let's get this other Griffon now. Let's launch all of our missiles at him. Who gives a shit, right? Oh shit, I should probably keep my hand on the <laughs> controls of the ship. <laughs> it's work! Alright, so in terms of damage, we did only suffer at the... What part of this ship should I call it? Basically this part right here. And um, otherwise... We didn't really suffer that much damage, like... This thing actually is really good at stopping artillery and missiles because of the seaways. And it also is good at delivering artillery because of the Schkval cannons. Uh, again, my favorite guns, bro. They're just... it's the best. But everything else about this ship, the price of this ship... I'd much rather go with the Kalahari. At, oh, it's the same price, but I think it's just... For the purposes of uh, being a large fighting ship, I think I'd go for the Kalahari of the same price over <laughs> this fucking thing. <laughs> but it is a fun little concept of designing a ship that is 90 degrees flipped. Which I will give credit for, but I will minus the points for it being min-maxed as fuck, bro. Like... Ay, 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 min maxing is not good. But anyway, let's move on to the next one, shall we? So, here we have the... Oh boy, not this ship again. <laughs> so here we have the Odessa, uh, this one right here. And this ship is meant to... I honestly don't know what purpose this ship has. With this kind of price tag, I would assume this thing is meant to be a single ship campaign type of ship, uh, even though even though the price tag is just a little bit above the budget that you start with at the campaign. But I mean, who gives a shit? You could always just change that in the game file, as I guess. But what is this thing really? Uh, from what I can see, this is meant to, first of all, look like a ship, because we can clearly see a bow, a tower, and a stern. We do also see quite a, lot of, quite a lot of artillery right here. We do have, like, I think five of these Schkval cannons. Two, three, four, and five. Yeah, five Schkval guns. 180mm guns. We also have a bunch of 130mm guns, which is kind of interesting. I'm guessing we're mixing calibers here. And, of course, the rest of the armament is full of Seawiz. 37 millimeter, millimeter sea whiz but personally i think i would have put a bunch of 57 millimeter windbill guns with the amount of sea whiz that's already on this thing but eh, it's just personal preference i guess but in terms of strategic assets uh, it does have a little bit of elant a little bit of radar and i'm guessing there's also yeah there is some thermal sensors right here uh, I don't see any sprints or any fire control radars, which I'm guessing it's because the ship already has a bunch of seaways, which it can use to stop missiles. Oh, and also we do have a bunch of planes right here, which um, they can be used to intercept missiles on the strategic map, even before the missiles hit the Odessa. 
I guess you can also launch them in combat, but I don't think I'm going to do that just because of uh, reasons. And also, I do see some missile silos. Okay, a couple of these are empty ones. I'm assuming these, these two empty silos are meant to be filled with missiles as a storage. We do have a couple of functioning silos, though. Here we have some missiles right here. Wait, what the hell is that missile? Ah! See, guys? This missile right here, I do not like it. Let's, let me fix that real quick. Now that is a lot better. Now I like this missile. All right. And don't worry. If you're if you guys are new to High Fleet, the letter N in half 15N stands for not a nuclear warhead. Easy. The stats of it are Okay, let's just not look at the stats. Uh, let's just not worry about that. Let's let's just get into combat with this thing. I want to see this thing fight. Okay, I think this is a pretty fair demonstration of this thing, what it can do in combat. Again, nothing too crazy because I don't really want to use so much time to fight literally hundreds of ships. Um, but I think this is a reasonable test, so let's go. All right, let's go, bitches. Ah. <laughs> I do like the volley on this thing though, the salvo. Boom, 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 boom. When you have more than sh when you have more than three shkvals on a ship, that's when it gets really fun. Because then you can just do this. I'm just annihilating these ships at this point, like... And look at the Sea Whiz, it's literally destroying these missiles in a singular salvo, bruh. Like, don't you see the price tag just from the volleys of this ship? Don't you see how much money I'm literally throwing by shooting at these missiles and also these ships? Also, I just took a little bit of a hit, but I should—I shouldn't have. Ah! Come on, these stupid nomads! All right. Where is that other nomad? It's a little hard to aim when there are smoke clouds larger than your own ship, which is literally a super dreadnought. <laughs> like, like, bro, sometimes I play this game and I realize just how insane just the setting of High Fleet is. Bro, this whole game is just absolutely insane. That is just some, that is some really nice looking fireworks. Bruh. He's work. Okay, let's shoot down this missile and I guess let's fire another salvo. Uh, uh, bully! Oh my god, the amount of lag! I like how we didn't even nick that other ship, even though we literally just bombarded it with artillery, bro. Ah, I guess that's what having balash and armor does to your ship. Literally makes it impossible to die. Oh, well, I guess it's not impossible now. <laughs> so, the Odessa class Super Dreadnought. What do I think of it? Is it a viable ship for a campaign? I don't know. I haven't tried it. 
but is it a fun ship to use in close quarter combat? Yes, it is. And does it have gun? Yes, it has gun. So, my final thoughts on this are... So that's where my budget went into. It's into a giant, impractical, flying piece of armored brick with uh, guns and just fucking planes, I guess. Okay, I think that's going to be it from the Odessa and all of the other ships that I've just shown you. You know what? Let's get back to the shipworks, shall we? And so, welcome to the shipworks, where I just wanted to say that I hope you guys have enjoyed the ships right here, and I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you guys want to see those ships for yourselves, I will post a link for the Google Drive of High Fleet Builds down in the description below, along with an invitation link to the Beans Navy. And the ships that I've just shown you now, and the other ships that I'll feature in videos like this one, are going to be in a slightly separate folder, which I'll call it the Beans Navy in the Google Drive folder. And that's going to be it. I, again, I hope you guys have really enjoyed this video. It took me quite a while to make it, actually. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. Here is a playlist for High Fleet Builds, and here is another video that you might actually really like if in, in case you don't want to watch High Fleet Builds. And right over here, we have the channel logo, which if you click on it, you, it'll take you to the main page, which I really do suggest you take a look at, the channel banner. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.